Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. And keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take few minutes to understand how this meditation practice will help for us to develop our conventional life. And also, out of that conventional development, how we can gain our spiritual success. So always you have to remember it is your responsibility to develop your conventional life and become a successful person with the spiritual foundation. It is The spirituality is not a kind of something that you withdraw from this conventional world. People do that for many reasons. But there is no separation when it comes to this spiritual life and the conventional life. Because the life itself depends from the perception that you have the faculty with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, and then all the perception we perceive. So this, that your life itself is the the Dhamma. You are the Dhamma. Only thing is, we don't see it. We don't understand it. We try to look outside world and try to outside things. But if you look into you and experience how your life happens, then you see it all happened according to necessary course and conditions. So understanding that itself is the, the understanding reality. So when it comes to reality, there are two ways. So one reality is we explain using these outside things. That whatever you experience with this outside world, with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, so whatever that you can feel, touch, you, you take it as the reality. But at the same time, depth of this all, we experience the impermanence, unsatisfactory nature and selflessness. So that is a, another reality. So getting to that reality, so in the beginning you have to, to connect it to the conventional reality. Because without perception, how are you going to understand what is impermanent? Without perception, how are you going to understand changeable nature? Without perception, how are you going to understand selflessness? 
So that's why the very moment of experience itself give the opportunity for you to see the Dhamma. But most of time, we always use that experience to analyze, to see something beyond us. So that's why the practicing meditation is a method. From the beginning, give you some opportunities to experience this nature within yourself. So that's why you have to learn to settle down a little bit and accept the world as it is rather than resisting. So then the very first quality you have to have that some kind of wise consideration regarding this conventional world rather than unwise consideration. Because it give, it give opportunity for you to accept the world rather than rejecting world or rather than resisting the world. So if you are capable to accept the world and let things to be as they are, it gives some kind of wisdom for yourself to, to go through it. Because otherwise, if you resist, you can't go through that. To go through something, you have to get out of the resistance. You have to be open. And that's why you have to have the confidence regarding the, the path or regarding the practice. Because the confidence gives the ability for yourself to, to move. Confidence gives you ability for yourself to accept. Confidence gives you ability for you to be open towards it. Confidence gives you ability for yourself to be receiver. So then look into yourself. When you, when you use your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body faculties, are you use it with the inner intention to grab something or develop something the way you want out of the perception or are you withdraw from that internal desire and allow it to come to you and are you aware about the moment of experience? So these two two different ways. So that's why practicing inhalation, exhalation give you this art of recognition. So when the inhalation happens, you become completely receiver. And you're not going to resist entire your head to toes, each and every cell become open to receive the inhalation. So when that inhalation happens, that means this entire universe come towards you. And when the exhalation happens, this each and every cell in your body go towards the universe. So you are opening to universe with the inhalation and at the same time universe become open to you when the exhalation happens. 
just imagine in case if you can't exhale just for a moment, what will happen? If any cell, if any place in your body can't, if any organ cannot exhale, if the energy cannot flow, what will happen? So then this outside world become a receiver. It accept you. It open to you. And at the same time, inhalation, when it happened, you open to that. So this both way. So then when it comes to eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, rather than trying to develop something out of that experience, can you be open to perception? So for that, you have to have some kind of neutral awareness. Neutral awareness means desireless moment of experience. So that is what we develop through the tranquility meditation. When you tranquilize, it allows you to calm down, relax and have the undisturbed mind. So from there, you develop the ability to recognize deeply, thoroughly with the critical analytical understanding. So that, when it comes to that understanding, so in the beginning, so you develop the ability to experience without any judgment, with, without any flavor, without any coloring. It's not easy because our self-centered idea, personal view, always come to us and try to manipulate this moment of experience. And that is where you have to trust. That's where you have to have the confidence to settle down. Be with the, the primary mental object. And that is what we could practice in sitting. Because when you close your eyes, when you settle down with your body and crossing legs, just imagine that... Uh, the body sometimes have the current itself to, to move over the open eyes or the ears try to go around and catch the sound. This whole body is kind of like a magnet. Always look, 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 look. Perception. But you knew, once you neutralize, you get out of that current. And that is where you can settle down deeply, unchangeable, unflavoring, confirm, con that's a confident. You have the, the, the moment to sit. You become unshakable. So then practice one minute enough. Unchangeable, unflavoring, confirm, confident to sit without looking for anything. Practice one minute. And this gives the strength, ability. And this will open for yourself to go a little bit more deeper. And that is where you can withdraw from on all that unwholesome, improfitable action. And other thing is when you are capable to settle down like that way, 
unchangeable, unflavoring, confirm, confident. There is a deeper energy transformation happens. So the, the, the entire this physical body start to develop different kind of energy. And the mind is start to tune to different frequency. So develop it. Little by little, maximize yourself. Uplift yourself. Increase yourself. Expand yourself. Don't shrink like a spring. Don't, don't, don't kind of like a Go downward. Try to open. It's kind of like a, you go through the rabbit hole. And beyond the, the rabbit hole, there is universe. So, you go into that. So that openness is a mental attitude. You are not biased to any point of view. You are not tangled or you are not carrying any kind of preconditioned mind. You keep the freedom, adaptivity. You keep the flexibility. You are open. You don't hold it to limits in your mind. And that is where you can bring the best out of your own life. And that's become an energy to yourself. And once you are capable to handle this physical body, Unchangeable, unflavoring, confirm the condition that, that you become so comfortable with this. And in, in that confident, something else start to happen. So you you are anymore not depending from the thoughts. So it called Cheto Vimutti. Deliverance of mind. Because otherwise, we always, we, when you go to this conventional world, it's, it's a dealing with the mind. Now you are come to a point anymore. You are not bound to that mind. You are not bound to that name and form. So that is where you gain the true freedom. And another thing is Panyavimut. So that is a kind of like a liberation from your own mind. That is the hardest part. You can find the freedom physically. Look that... Uh, once upon a time, you had the time to be with your parents. You had to go to schools. When you are, you used to depend on teachers, brothers, sisters, family members. And look, now you are you achieve to some kind of physical freedom. Now you are you are free to do something yourself. Of course, as ordinary people, we have some responsibilities. But still, you, you already have some kind of freedom. That physical freedom, somehow you can gain. There are a lot of people escape from place to place, go place to place, travel place to place, move place to place. And kind of like uh, experience this physical comfort or the freedom. But they don't see. They carry the same kind of mindset. But now here, look at the, the difference now. So you settle down. 
you are not anymore trying to move your body. You are not trying to coloring the ideas. You are not go looking for the favors. So you, you develop very unchangeable, solid, confirm that unflavoring confident with the posture. It's a completely opposite side of this conventional level, world of moving. So now the mind will start to transform. So then the any more thought patterns not going to push you. Of course, from the beginning you feel some kind of some kind of turbulence, but still by the time it will go away. So you can settle down. So now you are slowly deliverance of mind and anymore you are not depending on the mind. And another thing happens by the time. So deliverance through the wisdom. So that deliverance from the mind happened. Deliverance through the wisdom. So you have some kind of wisdom that you develop this all that what you experience, it's not you. It's all depend on cause and effect. And your all form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition, or your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, faculties, all the perception and all the experience Depending on cause and effect. So what you experience means it's a very result of cause and effect. It's not you. You can't name. So sometimes you, you, you can tell. Oh, I can see this. I can hear. So, so what does that mean? So in the moment of that experience, sir, you name as you, as I. Maybe seeing. So then, just imagine to see. You need this eye faculty and you need the object. So object, you don't have any power over object. So according to the light, according to the color, according to the distance, the very object you recognize is going to become different. So as example, you are driving on this, you know, heavy traffic area. Bumper to bumper, you 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 have traffic. Now now you see from here, the in front there are cars, you know, behind you on the from the side. So the whole freeway that you can see cars. So that's a distance. So then how about? You, you start to see the same freeway above you, maybe 10 feet. And then you see, you start to see more and more cars. And how about you go like a thousand feet high, 30, 36,000 feet high when the flight you know, go. And if you look through the window, you see, you don't see the previous, that the, the bumper to bumper traffic. You see, it's kind of like a line, unbreakable, unbroken. It's like a, it's like a river line. So that it, it, oh, it look like it's one thing. It's not, a, not separate. See that from the distance that what you see is different. So then if you recognize, oh, I see this, then all the perception that conditioned by something we forget and even ourselves. And like uh, when you suddenly wake up after 
deep sleep. When you open your eyes, maybe you're not going to recognize it very clearly, suddenly. It takes time for you. Or maybe uh, in the summertime, you look at the sun. Keep looking at it to five minutes and then come inside the house and look. You don't see anything. You start to see everything same like a kind of like a light. You don't see this any colors. So in that very moment, if you recognize, oh, I see this. What is that? So then don't try to label any experience. If you are capable to withdraw from labeling, grasping, clinging, allow that experience to happen, then you will see without any interference from you, without any effort, without any wish, that whatever arises itself by the time will change. So the outside things the same, perception the same, and even the inside thoughts the same. So once you recognize this, there's nothing to worry about anything. Of course, there, if there is something you have to do, if it is necessary, you do it. But most of the time you recognize in life, there are a lot of things arise itself and will disappear. And uh, you know, most of the, the very good leaders, that when it comes to leadership qualities, they have one very beautiful quality. What is that quality? Listening. They don't tell anything. <laughs> you know, just listen. So when it comes to you, and sometimes for your children, you no need to tell anything. What you need to do? You just keep listening. If you try to tell something, you are going to be in big trouble sometimes. But we have deeper, this inner behavior to react, react, react. That bring tangles. And even husband and wife, when it comes to relationship and uh, partnership, uh, even in the family sometimes, then just they need somebody to listen, not to, they no, they no need some kind of advice or no, you no need to tell anything. <laughs> they just need somebody to listen. So what does that mean then? And they come with big issues, they come with problems and they start to talk about it. And then they keep talking, talking, talking and by the time and uh, they get out of it. Nothing. So there are a lot of things in our life. This unnecessary interference take us to unnecessary situations because it happens this our unwise consideration. That's the reason. So then come to wise consideration. So to come to the very wise consideration, you have to be in the moment. And then you, are, you have to tune to the very frequency in the environment, in the present moment, related to whatever your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind experience. And that is where you can recognize and you can be with it and you can transform through it and 
gain some wisdom out of that experience. So deliverance of mind, it's a transformation of the mind and at the same time deliverance through the wisdom. So you take not any other ways, you take the, the path of the wisdom. For that you have to have so much strength because believing somebody is very easy. Believing something is very easy. But believing the wisdom is very difficult because if you don't experience it, how it works, you don't know about it. So that's why this path bring the ability for you to, to experience the wisdom and when the when you are capable to go through that, you are capable to deliverance through the wisdom and not clinging to that moment of experience. And you are you are go beyond the wisdom also. Remember what the Buddha taught. Just being a good person or being a bad person, the both. Buddha never appreciated. What's the point? Becoming a wise person and bring through that wisdom, bringing the transformation to yourself, bringing the change to yourself is the path of the Buddha's teaching. So then yourself, every day, with each and every opportunity that you have, so whatever the environment you go through, whatever the situation you go through, don't try to escape from that. Be open to it. Go learn to go through it. But at the same time, see the opportunity that what you can gain out of it and bring your transformation. Bring the change to yourself. So if you are capable to develop that method, each and every opportunity, each and every step that you go through in life become an opportunity for you to come closer to Nibbana. So be like that person. So in that way, you are anymore not biased to personal view, self-centered ideas, you are not biased to culture, tradition. You become a yogi, a sannyasi, a practitioner to go through the wisdom. So always you get nourished through the wisdom. Always you settle down with the wisdom. And that is the path of the vipassana. Always you brush up your mind with the critical analytical understanding and deeply thoroughly observe and recognize. Rather than the outcome, you see how it come to be as it is. So keep that attitude through this journey. And then you will see day by day, day by day, you start to brush up yourself, you start to clean yourself. You will get out of a lot of dust. You will get out of your gloomy, dusty mind. That is where you start to experience the, the true nature that happened within yourself. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left and make it straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes to yourself and say Suapatveva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think.
We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. So don't push hard yourself. Just be aware, allow your inhalation, exhalation to happen naturally, itself as it is. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. So if your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again and settle down with the sensation of breathing. Do nothing extra. Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world. Around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side.
डाउनलोड एंड अपवर्ड to all six directions at once like the moon the sun spread the light spread the energy without any condition without any limitation without any resistance or without any judgment let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest wishing yourself may all living beings in this universe be well and happy Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. पटिपति बुद्धंगूजे दूजे संगं पूजे अतायमाय पटिपति जातिजरा व्यामरण बरीबुंजुस्वामी इदम मे पुण्यकमस वक्रया वहन हो तो सब दुखापमुंच Bless you.